Hi everyone, thanks for being here. My name is Kat and I make houseplant videos here on Good and Planty. <laughs> Sorry, I don't know what just happened, but if you just so happen to absolutely love this video, please consider liking it, commenting, subscribing, or following me on Instagram. All of these things help me grow my channel like a plant. So it is no secret that I have moved, <laughs> as you have known from like my past 10 videos. We're here, all of the plants have made it, more or less. I wanted to share with all of you the hardest to easiest plants I have found throughout this move. So if you have a move coming up, this will kind of help you gauge what plants might need a little extra precaution or TLC and what plants you might not have to worry about as much. We're gonna start with the easiest plant and work our way up to the hardest plant. The first plant I wanna talk about is succulents. And this particular succulent is a Haworthia. I love her, she's gorgeous. This might be a little bit boring because we all know succulents are fairly easy, but I just wanted to highlight how easy in fact they are to move. They are drought tolerant and very flexible in terms of light. On top of that, most succulents are very compact. So you can see that this plant isn't really going anywhere when being jostled around. And that made it really easy to pack a bunch of succulents in a box and move them with very minimal damage, if any. Obviously, if your succulent is flowering, that might need a little bit more care and eye on the plant, but none of my plants are, uh, none of my succulents are flowering, so I didn't have to worry about that. I just wanted to knock this one out of the way because it's a little bit boring, but in fact, I found to be the easiest type of plant to move. Next up is Hoya, and this particular one is a Hoya Jennifer. You can kind of see the unique venation on this plant. This is a smaller cutting, of course, but I will be talking kind of more generally about Hoya. They are honestly, like to me at least, a foliage version of succulents, like a very leafy version, because they are so flexible in terms of light and water that to move them is fairly simple, I have realized. For example, this plant has not been watered in about two weeks. It is tiny and guess what? She's holding up. She's not super wrinkly or bendy. She's really retaining the, the water that I gave her before I even moved while I was prepping. She is really good at withholding that water and I have found that to be true with all of my Hoya, in fact, that I have moved. And I have honestly at this point quite a few. I feel like I can speak generally about them. On top of that, they are very flexible with light. They can handle higher light, but they will be completely fine in lower light. While I'm moving them around, I don't have to be worried about placing them like jammed by a window, but also if they are in a shady, darker area of my home, kind of blocked off with boxes, I'm also not freaking out about it. I find these plants to be very easy going, go with the flow. Sorry, I thought I saw a mealy bug. We're good. <laughs> the one thing and why they are not ranked number one is because if you have Hoya with peduncles, flowers, or new growth, you do risk losing that. So I, I had a peduncle or two that I was really excited about that I found before the move. However, after the stress of moving and drastic changes in conditions throughout the day, a lot of those peduncles, actually all of the peduncles have shriveled up and will not produce flowers for me, which is a huge bummer, but at least the whole mama plant is all right. That is also true for a lot of new growth, like skinnier vines that just have little nubs of new leaves. A lot of those have dried up for me as well. And that's probably just just do from moving stress, change in environments, stuff like that. They can be a little bit sensitive in terms of the weaker parts of the plant, but as a whole, all of my mother plants are holding up really, really well. They are not needy at all. And I'm just really proud of how they are doing. I feel like they are also very easy to decorate with because they are so flexible. So you can put them under grow lights, in windowsills, or in a little darker place of your home, and they will for the most part, hold up. Big shout out to the Hoya, very stress-free plant for me right now. I'm so thankful that I have a decent amount of them <laughs> in my collection. And if you have a lot of plants that you are moving, you don't have to worry so much about the Hoya. Next up, we have a little bit of a troublemaker. This has been a plant that I've been 
on and off with for probably since the start of my channel. We have a little bit of a toxic relationship and that is Peperomia. So this is a Peperomia Frost specifically. But again, I'm talking about all Peperomia in general. Peperomia was a genus of plants that I decided to cut down on a lot during my purge. They were not handling the conditions of my old home very well. They required more water than I was able to provide to them, especially in smaller terracotta pots like this. I did hold on to the Peperomia frost because it was one of my first Peperomia. Very excited about her and I did want to have at least one in my collection to talk and share with all of you as kind of like a demo plant but reducing my amount of peperomia really reduced the amount of stress I had during the move. Throughout the move this is one of the first plants to kind of start getting really wilty and thirsty. I luckily gave a little bit of water to some of my more finicky plants recently so she bounced back and you can see if I squeeze her leaves there's not much give which is my favorite way to kind of tell if a plant is thirsty if you look closely i actually do have a few flowers on their way i'm gonna try to show you i'm not doing a very good job but there is a flower growing here so all in all is she holding up yes this is kind of the middle ground plant where it is not as easy as a hoya or a succulent you do kind of have to keep an eye on her and again these leaves are very fragile so you might lose a few throughout the move if they get caught in a box or something like that it's a little bit more of a fragile dramatic needy plant but not the hardest plant to move especially if they are small and compact like this water your peperomias during a move especially if they are in a terracotta pot it's not gonna kill you there's other plants in this list that might kill you but not this one <laughs> next up we have a plant that i currently have beef with not very happy with her i want to talk about euphorbia slash cacti you would think that because i put succulent in the easiest class that euphorbia and cacti would be close to follow, but no, <laughs> these are a nightmare to move in my opinion. It's not so much about the care. I'm sure you can guess why they are a nightmare. In terms of care, they are very easy. You don't have to worry about light or water in a lot of the similar ways I talked about the succulent and the Hoya. You can kind of let them dry out. You can shift them around in different lighting environments and they will be fine, but it is the spikes <laughs> that make them so difficult to move around and to pack in with other plants. I really recommend using gloves around these plants or um, what are these called? Tongs, use tongs where you can to place these plants around because I put this plant in particular, I have beef with this particular plant because I did put her in a shallower box where she is poking out a lot. This plant is consistently spiking me and like dragging its little spines through my fingers. It's very, very itchy afterwards. I don't know if you've ever been pricked by a euphorbia or cactus, but a lot of them will make you itchy and give you a bunch of little micro cuts that are super annoying. So I just wanted to share my experience with this euphorbia and my cacti so that if you are moving your plants, you know to look out for them. It sounds like it should go without saying. It seems incredibly obvious. But when you are in the midst of a move and you have 50 other things to worry about and you know cacti are easy care and you kind of can just neglect them, boom, they will spike you and ruin your day. So I just want to tell you about that and kind of like give you a big red flag. This is a spiky, annoying plant, <laughs> beautiful plant, but definitely take safety precautions when dealing with them. Maybe try to consolidate all of your cacti in a very tall, maybe a plastic tub or something like that. So you can kind of keep them all together away from other boxes. I have these sprinkled throughout all of my belongings. So it kind of raises the risk of getting caught up in them. Yeah, just be careful with them and be a little mindful about how you're moving them. The last plant I wanted to talk about, which is the hardest plant in my opinion to move, is this plant, which is my Monstera Deliciosa or Borzigiana. I know that we all have conflicting opinions on that. I don't know. This plant, if you haven't watched my moving vlog, was the source of a lot of stress. I am no stranger to large plants. I have moved large plants, large plants before and it 
yes, obviously it's gonna be stressful to carry around a large plant and transport it. The hardest thing about the Monstera plant is how wide it grows and how many leaves you have to account for. And I find that to be true regardless of the size. I realize not everyone has their Monstera in like a 14 inch pot. You might have a six inch pot Monstera, but just having plants that are so grown out and spread and have aerial roots to watch over, it's a lot to <laughs> keep an eye on when you are moving so many things and trying to fit as much possible into a truck or a car, incorporate the time and care that it takes to move large plants like this into your moving schedule. I had particularly warned everyone helping me move that the Monstera and the Mykins are going to be time eating plants to move. The reason that I put the Monstera in this category and not the Mykins is because the Mykins that I have is very compact and vertical. You only have to worry about, you know, the top and the bottom. Whereas with some other plants like the Monstera, you really have a lot going on, a lot of foliage to look after, and it's not going to be perfect. I did lose part of my leaf if you didn't watch the moving vlog. You might take a little bit of an L here and there, but it's okay. She's still alive. Definitely, I emphasize this in all of my moving vlogs, but definitely, definitely, definitely move at least your heavy, big plants dry. Water them maybe a week before you move. Just like let the soil dry out, let the pot dry out, let it be light and easier to carry. You will thank yourself <laughs> during your move. Those are my little five plants that stood out to me while I was moving. I hope that is helpful to anyone preparing to move or thinking about moving. Those are just some things to look out for. I really appreciate you watching today's video. Thank you so much. I will have some general moving updates coming out on Friday, so stay tuned for that. Please subscribe to my channel if you aren't subscribed already and you wanna see more plenty content from me. Like this video, hit that notification bell, all that good stuff. And I will see you in my next video. Bye.